Hello everyone, Absent Friend here, and I'm taking a quick break from shooting my next guide to tell you that we have reached 100 subscribers. So as a special treat, I'm gonna take you to my gaming table and show you how I play Disney Villainous Solo. And welcome to the game table. As you can see, we're set up to play Disney Villainous. We're gonna play Ursula since she was the first guide I ever made. We're gonna be fitting to start with her, my solo playthroughs, runs, whatever you wanna call them. All right, so uh, all you need to play the solo version is the game itself and something to keep count because you're gonna have to count to 20. So however you wanna do it, I'm using my tablet. I've got a, ta a counter app. You use your phone to get uh, this app or whatever app you like that can keep count. Or uh, you can actually do it with um, a little clicker thing if you got one of those things. Um, or if you have a 20-sided die, that would work. Or if you really wanna go you know, old school, you can get a piece of paper and a pencil and just tally, right? Oh gosh. Okay, so um, anyway, I'll explain some of the rules as I, I'm shuffling here. The main rule that I use that is kind of unique that I've never seen anybody do in any solo playthrough videos that I've watched, is I'm going to fate myself every turn. Now, I've seen online where and videos where people will fate themselves and they'll use like a 10-sided dime, and they will only fate themselves if they like roll a one through four, okay? Or something like that. And I've tried that before, and it there was one game I played where I didn't get fated at all. Now, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I actually do play this with other people, at least the people I play with, we fade each other constantly. We are vicious. So I can't imagine playing a game against other people where you don't get faded. I mean, that's just silly. So, or, you know, you get faded based on a dice roll. No, 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 no. So anyway, um, so I'm gonna fade myself every other turn. Is it challenging? Absolutely. But if I can still win being faded that often, I think I've got a pretty good handle on this character. And the next time I play with real people, I don't think I'll be faded that often, but um, I'll still be able to hopefully hold my own and figure out some things and what to do in many, many different situations. All right, so here we go. We are ready. So we're gonna drop four and I'll explain some other rules as we go. Um, about how to handle certain things. Okay, so here we go. All right, so the first hand's kind of crappy. We do have the cauldron though. I like to put that out there because uh, it, it can be useful sometimes. It's kind of situational, but all right. Turn one, we are off to the shore. I'm going to gain three power. And for one, I am going to play the cauldron. I'm just gonna go right there at Eric's ship. Um, now, you might be asking about the conditions. How do you do conditions when you're playing solo? There's nobody else to condition with. Well, you condition yourself. So for example, if I am able to defeat a hero with strength four or more, which in this game, that's only Ariel and uh, King Triton, I believe. Uh, may maybe Eric is four. Uh, but anyway, if I defeat them in one turn and I have this card in my hand, then at the end of my turn, after I draw back up to four, before I start my next turn, I will play the card and resolve its actions. So that way it still feels like a condition, even though, you know, cause it's not technically my turn, yada, yada, yada. So hopefully I'll be able to play condition and you guys will be able to get to see how it works. All right. Okay. So I played a card. I, I'm no, I don't have a same card to play. So I'm just going to discard all these. Although keeping that contract is a really good idea. Um, but it's too early in the game to hold on to it. I can actually retrieve it later if I want to if circumstances allow me to. All right, so I'm drawing back up to four. Ooh, there's the trident and a whirlpool and the, um, a contract for Eric's ship. This is gonna be a good hand. This is gonna be, this is gonna be good. I'm gonna wait a bit though on that because uh, I'm gonna try to combo it if I can. All right, so that was the end of turn one. We are now starting turn two. I will be faded at the end of this turn. All right, so we're going to go to the, we're gonna go to Eric's ship. We're gonna gain one. 
we're gonna discard this contract. And I, well, see, I don't have enough power to play these things. So I'm gonna need a total of seven power to make, eight power to make this combo work. So I'm gonna have to probably wait a bit. Um, but anyway, I am, uh, I'll wait. Before I do that, I have to, I have to go in order. Otherwise I'll, I'll get all this track. All right, so I discarded the only card I wanted to discard. I'm not playing anything. Uh, so my turn is over. I'm drawing back up to four. Oh my gosh. Now this, <laughs> this is a little lucky. Ursula got very lucky this time, okay? All right, so that's okay. Uh, anyway, so this turn is over. I'm now going to fate myself. All right, so I've got, look at there, Ariel and Return to Form. Well, we can't play Return to Form because there's no one in the discard pile to play. So I'm gonna play Ariel. We're, she can't do anything to cover up this action. And you know what? Just to be a bitch, she's gonna steal that cauldron. It doesn't really matter, but she's doing it anyway. All right, so actually that was very, uh, good that she came out when she did. All right, so I'm now beginning turn three. I am going to the shore. I am gaining three power. And I have six power now, but I'm not gonna play anything because I need to save up my power so I can um, play my combo here. So actually, I won't be able to play my combo because she's covering my action. So, phooey. That's okay, I have a better idea. I'm gonna take this four power and since Ariel's out, she can't steal it. And I'm gonna go to uh, put the crown in my lair. And yeah, so there we go. You can steal it. Draw back to four. There's another whirlpool. That will actually come in handy here in a second too. All right, so we're gonna go to turn four and we're gonna go to my lair. So we're going to gain one uh, power and we're going to activate the crown and we're going to look at these. Now, of course, look at means only you get to see it, but since it's just us, I think we can handle it. Yeah, Eric is four, I was right. And a Snarf Flat, that's bad. That's bad if, uh, for when I put out the Trident. Hopefully I can do it within one turn, but being able to put one on Ariel would be bad too, because that would make it harder for her to uh, Vamoose. Um, and she will have to Vamoose because I will not be able to, well, unless I get lucky and I can get an um, Opportunist. Uh, but anyway, yes, I will be discarding these. I mean, Eric's not that bad, but we're just gonna discard them. All right, hopefully there's nothing worse in there because I'm about to be faded. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna play a card because I haven't done that yet. And for one, I'm going to play Whirlpool and I'm just gonna move Ariel over there. So she's out of the way. And I can use both of my card actions. All right, still haven't got enough power to do what I need to do. Uh, but it is time, oh wait, let me read. All right, a little change form. That'll help a little bit too. Um, maybe. I'm going to, oh well, looks like we're gonna change form for me. Um, Scuttle could come out and get one of the, uh, that Snarf Flat on himself, but Grimsby is, as a Fator, not knowing what's in Ursula's hand, Grimsby is the better card to play because he can change that. Now, that's a tough call to make because um, now you've locked the crown, and which means it can't be stolen, but since Ariel is out, no one's gonna be stealing it anyway. But it will also mean she can't move the trident in there until she moves back, until she gets out of it, so yeah. All right, so, well, not a total loss. Okay, so let's go on to turn five. I'm gonna go ahead and, since I can, go over to the palace, game two, removing Grimsby, off of, my disc off my double card play action. And that's, I can't do anything else. There's no, I can't move anything. So that's it. All right, that was turn five and I'm already at four. So now we're gonna move on to turn six. Back to the shore. Gain three. I'm up to seven now, but I need eight to make this combo happen. Um, and that's okay. So I better keep that. I better keep everything for now. <sighs> All right, so here we go. We're fading me again. This is the end of turn six. There's Max. Oh dear. 
Yeah, playing Max now wouldn't be good because, well, actually. Yeah, you still want to cover this up. Dingo hoppers are good, um, but they're only good if they're there and there, or there and there, depending on what's unlocked at the time. So, and he's going to move Ursula over there, so she can't move him, at least right away. <sighs> okay. All right, so that's all right. We just keep getting pushed back, which is not a good thing in solo mode, but that's okay. I still have confidence that we can do this. All right, so I'm just going to go back to the shore. Gain three. Now I have enough power to do what I need to do, but I need I need my double card play action for this. All right. Turn eight. Let's go back over here. Let's move Max. Party on Eric's ship, I guess. Well, actually, it's kind of like that scene in the movie. There's Grimsby, there's Max, and Ariel's, um, you know, kind of in the water watching uh, and swooning over her man, who should be there too, but oh well. All right. So I did that. I already gained the two power. I can't move anything. So, but that's the end of turn eight. So... Okay. This, uh, the Snarf Flat is good on Ariel. Let's do that because we are going to have to destroy Ariel at some point. And the Fator should know Ariel. Uh, so at least now we've made it to where Ariel will be a little harder to put contracts on. So no problem. Okay, that was the end of turn eight. Now for turn nine. Okay. I'm going to have to do this. All right, so we're gonna go to, to three, or go to the shore, gain three. And for my first card, we are going to play change form. So I'm gonna move that lock token back. And now I can activate again. Ariel's out, so she can't steal my crown, so I guess it's not a terrible thing. Um, okay, and then for my second card, uh, may regret this, but it's coming. All right, four power, play the trident, but I'm gonna play it here at the shore, okay? So then, wait a minute, no I'm not. Play it here in my, in my uh, lair. Okay, so now I have to find King Trident. I know he's not in there, so I have to look in here. He's at the bottom, wow. Okay, so, and since I had to look through here to find him, I have to reshuffle all four cards. All four cards, shuffle, 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 all four cards, shuffle. Okay, <laughs> and he gets the Trident attached to him. All right. Okay, well, I was hoping to activate the crown so I could at least, um, you know, do some damage or try to control my fade deck, but that's okay. I didn't want to put him here because I needed that double card action. So that's, I can handle it. All right, so here we go with turn 10. All right, we're gonna go here. I don't gain anything, but for three, because one uh, contracts cost one extra. Oh, this is turn 10. Um, I'm gonna put this contract on him. And if Sebastian comes out in this next fade action, I'm going to metaphorically throw something. And there might be a little bit of swearing, so, uh, you know, cover your ears. All right. I can't move anybody, but I did do that. So we're ready. Oh wait, I gotta draw back to four. Actually, you know what? I didn't draw back up to four at the end of my last turn. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. Because I wouldn't have been able to play anything extra anyway. And I would have met that condition, but again, that's okay. All right, so I'll meet it here in a second. But I gotta fake myself. Oh no, there he is. <laughs> oh, why? 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 
<laughs> Sorry, Flounder. No, oh, Sebastian. <sighs> Actually, I'm gonna play, wait. Let me make sure I do this right. Because when Sebastian comes out and you get to do this, it says you can attach it to a hero that's not on the Eric ship. That hero is defeated when they are moved to Eric's ship. Not played. So if I play Sebastian to Eric's ship, the contract is not met. And if somebody has clarification on that, um, please let me know in the, in the comments. Leave a, a link to uh, some, you know, whatever you got that will um, confirm that. But I think I'm doing that right. All right. Damn you, Sebastian. All right. So. Uh, okay. All is not lost. I'm going to go to the shore for turn 11. And I'm going to gain three. Which means I've met this condition card right here. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that at the end of this turn. Okay. So we're just going to put that over here for now. So we remember to do it. It's still in my hand. I'm just getting it out of the way. All right, so um, we're going to play Divination for one. That means I reveal top the cards from my deck until I reveal a contract. So I need a new contract, so this is perfect. Oh, I needed that opportunity, so it would have been even better. No. There's one. That's a good one to get. All right, so it's okay. I only lost one Opportunist, too, because Opportunist is a very, very good card. All right, so that was my first card. Now for my second card, I'm going to put a new binding contract on this bastard. And there is no other Sebastian to come out and make him give it up. So, all right, so that was my second card. And um, I'm not gonna discard. I'm gonna save this Grow Giant. I may need it to do something. I may need it to move Ariel or something like that. Where are Flotsam and Jetsam? I haven't seen them yet. It would be handy to have. <sighs> All right. So I'm going to draw back up to four. Oh, look, another Whirlpool. This is the end of my turn. I am in between turns right now. So I am cashing in my my condition, trickery, which means during this turn, uh, during their turn, uh, if I had six or more power, which I did uh, during my turn. I know I don't have it now. All right. So I reveal the top card of the other player's fate deck. Well, I don't have any other players to do. So this is how I resolve this. I take the top card of my fate deck and discard it. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but I just think that's a, a fair trade off for solo mode. So uh, if you don't like it, well, you can leave me a nasty comment if you want to, I guess. I probably won't read it, but you know, you can still do that if you, if you like. All right, so we are now moving on to turn 12. See, and I don't refill my hand because if you were playing that in between turns, you would start your turn with less cards, uh, usually after you do a condition. Turn 12, we are going over back to Ursula's lair. Well, we don't get any power. However, we are going to play for one, Whirlpool, and move King Triton to the shore. So he perishes and turns into those little slug thingies. The trident is mine, however it's there, and Ariel is still out and I can't move her, or I can't move anything, so now my next goal is to get rid of her. Just gotta go. But I can activate. So I'm going to activate my crown to, oh yes, this is good because if I recycle my deck, my fate deck, I do not have to worry about return to form, bringing back somebody quickly. All right. So, there's not many cards that I would want to discard anyway. Maybe Eric, because so, he can move some of those heroes around and clog up my spaces. All right. So, that was the first card. Return to form. And the second card, oh, return to form. Well, you know what? I'm just going to put them right there. That way, the next person who fates me that's what they'll draw. Isn't that nice? And they would have no idea. How devious. I guess that's why it's called trickery. But I didn't do that. I'm just saying. Uh, anyway. Okay. So. I did what I needed to do. I played my cards. I activated the crown. Um, oh, I can gain one power. I forgot to do that. Okay. 
All right, we're gonna draw, whoops. We're gonna draw back up to four. I got a new contract. Hey, you're going on Ariel very soon. All right. Yeah, this, this could be weird, but I'll, I'll make it happen. All right, so I need to be faded. Guess what? <laughs> Oh no, the poor Fator. What are they gonna do? Nothing. <laughs> uh, it's fun to trick yourself. Okay, now for turn 13. We're going over the shore. We're gaining three power. We are going to spend, uh, let's see, Arrow's got a Snarf Flat, which means contracts are three power more expensive. So this will be five total power. One, two, three, one, two, three four, five to put this binding contract onto Ariel. This is the combo I was trying to do a while ago, uh, but it didn't work out. So first card, you put the contract on. The second card, Whirlpool. Or I could use Grow Giant, uh, but I'll use Whirlpool because it's more, oh, this Whirlpool is gone. There's a new Whirlpool. All right, so Ariel is going to the shore and she is now a little slug thingy. And two return to forms were already put out too. So hopefully she will not or that will not come out in the next fate action. As a matter of fact, I may go over here. <laughs> well, I am gonna go over there, activate that crown and see about what might come up next. Okay, so anyway, Ariel is defeated. These guys are here. Still at Eric's ship. And I'm gonna draw back up to four. There you are. Okay, so I'm go. Oh, this is turn 14. I'm going to Ursula's Lair, gain one, activate the crown, and let's see what would have come up. Hmm, yeah. I mean, they're actually both not so, not so bad. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna keep them because that way I know exactly what's about to happen and I can plan. So it's actually a good idea to keep them sometimes. Just depends on uh, what they are. There are some that you need to get rid of, like if it was, if it was Ariel or something, and, and she was going to come out at a bad moment, absolutely, get rid of her. All right, so for two... Oh, I'm going to move the trident. Almost forgot to do that. All right, and then for two, I'm playing Flotsam. Hang on, this is turn 15. Sorry about that. Wait, is that right? Oh dear. Turn, let's see. I did turn 13. And I was thinking, so no, this is turn 14. Okay, good. All right, so, yeah, cause turn 13 I went there. All right, so. Um, I don't think I gained the one power. Or maybe I did. Oh well. I'll, let's, let's just say I don't take that action. Alright, but it is time to, to fate me for real. So, um, really, he's no good right now because the, uh, the objectives are already out. It's usually, he's good to play whenever she still has not got her objectives. Uh, because if she's still looking for them, that will. And if you know they're in the discard pile because she divin did a divination and they went in there, <laughs> Even better, she won't be able to opportunist them out. All right, so we're gonna do Eric. We're gonna have Eric cover up uh, this, her activation action. And we're gonna have Grimsby cover up her other action. So now she's very limited in what she can do, sort of. <sighs> All right, so that was turn 14. Draw back up to four. Oh, look, opportunist. They come in handy. Now we're on to turn 15. We're gonna go over here. We're going to play three power, pay, gain three power. And for one, I'm going to play Grow Giant so I can borrow this move action and go over here and I'm going to win the game because I will not be faded at the end of this turn. So you might be thinking, now wait a minute, absent friend. I think that if you were playing against other people and you had your goals, your uh, objectives at the goal, you would be faded. That is true. More than likely, 
Absolutely right, especially with the people I play with. However, there is a good chance, or a fair chance, that, and I'll use Ursula's board for example. Let's say you're playing head-to-head -head against somebody, and they ended their last turn here. They wouldn't be able to fate me, right? Now, with Ursula, they could borrow the fate action from here, so if they had that card. But again, that's only for Ursula. But just for the sake of argument, any other hero would more than likely, and if their other fate action was covered or locked, right? So there is a good chance that at this point in the game, they would have been covered and probably not been able to fate. But again, it's the rules of solo. I mean, I faded myself how many times? Seven, seven times, and I was still able to pull it off. Now I will say, I got very lucky getting the Trident and the Crown very, very early in the game. Um, normally I would just be cycling it through as quickly as possible. Uh, there have been games where they were both on the bottom of the deck. So, um, but anyway, so yeah, I did get a, lot, a, bit of that, a little lucky with that. But y'all saw how the fates worked, right? Sebastian came out and stole the, uh, stole the contract right off of Triton. And Ariel came out and she was, I mean, she didn't steal any of my good items, but I couldn't move anything while she was out. So I had to get rid of her so I could move Trident or, you know, stuff around. But that's it. Ursula wins. She is now the ruler of the ocean. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And once again, thank you for 100 subscribers. And I hope we can get to 200 and I'll have something special planned for them too. Maybe one, maybe the next uh, solo playthrough or some other solo playthrough. Uh, we'll see. I have several games that I can do solo that are a lot of fun to do. All right. So y'all have a great, great whatever you have, night, day. And I will see you guys next time with my next guide coming out soon. Bye-bye.